Welcome back. In this week, I will introduce you root locus analysis. Includes root locus plot and root locus assisted control system design. Since root locus analysis is a relatively large topic, and in this course, I can only give you an introduction. More details about root locus analysis will be taught in a separate course called control system design and analysis. Okay, and in this course, once again, it's just an introduction. So I wanted to make sure you understand the requirement first, what you need to know and regarding root locus analysis. As I said earlier, this is a relatively large topic and it can go go in depth. Okay, and here um, for this course is we are just stay at the introduction level. All right. The first requirement is know how to interpret root loci. So basically I can do intro well, so what is a root loci? I will show you later on. So basically this is a collection of roots to the characteristic equation. When you have a controller gain, say changing from zero to infinity. Okay, you need to know how to interpret the root loci. So basically the relationship between the closed loop poles and the system performance. Okay. Second, know how to plot the root loci of simple systems, less than three combined poles and zero. Okay, so very simple systems. Okay. Know the root loci of a common zero pole configuration, which I will cover in just a few minutes. Okay. And know how to use MATLAB to perform root locus analysis of a closed loop system. Okay, so there's a one important fact here is the transfer function you will use is not the closed loop transfer function, but the open loop transfer function. I will also go into details in the next few slides. And the last, we will use root loci to help us design a proportional plus derivative controller. So these are the five major requirements for root locus analysis. Okay. So the exam, once again, the exam will stay within um, this scope. All right. All right. So first let's look at a system. Actually, we will go through this system in details in the next video to show you why we need to have root loci and how the root at a different gain impact systems performance. Okay. So we have a third order system, okay, which is given right there. And the control of this controller. And obviously this is a K times 40 plus S. So 40 is a proportional controller s as we all know s is the operator for differentiation so it's a derivative controller so basically here we have a closed loop system all right with a proportional plus derivative control of this plant and we have a combined gain of interest k so we would like to know how this combined gain K will impact system's performance as well as stability of the closed loop system. Okay. All right. So this is uh, before I'm going to be going to for the next two videos. We have about total about 30 minutes. Okay. To go through details about this simulation for this system. All right. But uh, now I'm just going to introduce you the general concept. We have a combined system. This G of S could be controller and the plant. H of S is the feedback loop could be sensor dynamics. Okay. And we have learned from earlier, the closed loop system is represented by this transfer function G of S over one plus G times H. And obviously we know the character characteristic equation plays the most important role because its roots will determine the stability of the system. So here we're going to just look at the characteristic equation, which is one plus GS times H of S equal to zero 
or this is g of s times h of s equal to negative 1. Keep in mind, okay, this g s, this g of s times h of s is called open loop transfer function. Why is it called open loop transfer function? Because this is where we assume the loop is open from here, right? So let's say loop is open from here. So this gives you the open loop transfer function, g of s. So what is the closed loop transfer function? Yeah, this is the closed loop transfer function. Okay. And uh, this g of s times h of s is a complex quantity. Okay. So basically, we all know if this is equal to negative 1, for complex value, it has to simultaneously satisfy two conditions. One is magnitude condition. Magnitude condition says, okay, the magnitude of this complex variable has to be equal to 1. The other one is angle condition. So this is negative 1. It means it has to be on the negative real axis. Okay. So that's the reason we have negative plus, negative plus 180, 2k plus 1. All right. So this just refers to the negative real axis. You can obviously go many cycles and many cycles. Okay. In general, the closed loop transfer function can be written into this format. And uh, so we have one corresponding to this one right there, all right? And uh, this actually corresponding to the open loop transfer function, right? So, and the gain k is the controller parameter. Basically, it's the parameter of our interest. So in this case, the open loop transfer function is simply this part. Okay, actually, what we're showing in this square, in this block, okay, in it's very important. First, when we do root locus plot analysis, okay, use always use open loop transfer function, and the MATLAB command is R locus. All right. So what you're going to put in is not the closed loop transfer function, but open loop transfer function. And there's a second requirement, which is also very important, which is this k. k has to be appear as a multiplier in the top, in the numerator. If the parameter of interest is not at this location, you have to manipulate the characteristic equation so that the parameter of interest appear as a multiplier in the numerator all right and uh, we will later on we, we will look through examples all right but once again two things important when you do root locus analysis use the open loop transfer function even though the result you get applies just directly to the closed loop system but for analysis, you use open loop transfer function. Second, make sure the gain of interest is a multiplier in the numerator. All right. So this is uh, something very important. Okay. So now you probably ask, hey, why we wanted to do this root locus plot? Okay. With the parameter of the gain. Well, this is a. Uh, this actually is very important. For example, when we have a controller and uh, say just like the one we have earlier right and we would like to know the optimal value for k and maybe the maximum value for k to avoid um, instability so and the root loci can give us the entire picture how the gain k will affect the system's performance so you well, then you could probably ask, hey, why we need to know all the details about the, the root location or the pole location? And uh, this is a very, very important because if we, you recall, we have this important graph, right? As long as we know the pole location, we know it's transient performance. Obviously, we also know it's a stable or not stable. We will also know how fast it oscillates, right? By looking at the omega d, by estimating its damping ratio, we also know how fast it will converge in how many cycles, and we can estimate the time constant 
we know in roughly how many seconds the system will converge to within 2% of the final value. So with this relationship, we know the importance of a root locus plot. As the gain k of interest changes, changes from zero to infinity. So what is the official definition of a root locus plot? Definition, okay. The loci of the roots of the characteristic, characteristic equation or the closed loop pose when the value of gain k varies from zero to infinity. Obviously, this is not arbitrary gain. It's a gain in the often in the controller of our interest. And uh, what's their application to assist control system design, all right? And the root locus plot of a clear map between the value of gain k and the closed loop system's performance and uh, stability, which is clearly demonstrated using this graph, okay? And uh, plot root loci, okay? This is a, there, normally there are two approach to, to do it. One approach is just simply use MATLAB, yes. That's, you can do it very easily, but the important thing is you need to know how to use it and how to interpret the result. Once again, we only use, we only use open loop information, all right, to plot the root loci of the closed loop system. So in MATLAB, the command is R locus and uh, Basically, what you do is you have to specify the open loop transfer function, right? And the other approach often we do is using manual approach. So we plot it manually. And uh, this is uh, very important. This let us to have in-depth understanding of the system, all right? And uh, unfortunately, in this course, this is an introduction. I will not test uh, that much about the menu plot. Menu plot, as I said earlier, only restrict to simple system. This uh, combined number of posts and zeros less or equal to three. Okay, and uh, so this is a root locus plot. So these are big definitions. Okay. Now let's just look at some really, really simple examples before we next two lectures, we will do simulations, right? So let's just look at a very, very simple case. How about we only have one pole, okay? Let's say we have one open loop pole at S equal to negative two. So in this case, the open loop transfer function G times H equal to K over S plus two. Okay, and uh, the characteristic equation is relatively simple. It's s plus two plus k equal to zero. So basically, it means s equal to negative two minus k. All right. So if k is changing from zero, so when k equal to zero is very easy. So basically, root loci always starts from open loop pole. Okay. As you can see, it always starts from open loop pole. So when k increases and we plot many points and we connect them, we get this curve. So this is uh, the root loci of, uh, well, a first order system. When the pole is on the right left hand side of S plane. So when we look at this root loci, well, do we have any observation? Yes, first, this is a uh, first order system. Second, this is a stable first order system because it's on the left hand side of S plane. When we solve this in time domain, you'll get the exponential term with a negative time constant, negative t, negative constant times t. So basically, with the increase of time, well, this, the value will decrease. So it's a stable system. And uh, next we're going to ask, is this overdamped, critical damped? Well, in this case, actually, it's it's really, when we talk about overdamped, critical damped, we often refer to the second order system. So this is really, really doesn't apply. But obviously, its performance 
is similar to that of an overtemperature system. Because there's no oscillations when it's subject to impact or step response. Okay. So that's the so that's the interpretation of this simple um, root locus plot. And you do have the knowledge from earlier lectures how to interpret the results. Next we will look at a little bit the complex case. So here is a one pole, okay. How about we have two poles now, okay? And just I'm not going to write down the open loop transfer function and the and the characteristic equation anymore. You can easily derive it, okay? I just going to show you, okay? These are open. The root loci always starts from the open loop poles, okay? And the one branch goes to this direction, one branch goes to this direction, and then it goes up. This one goes down. So, so we have almost like a cross-shaped root loci, but these two branches will go to positive infinity and the negative infinity, all right? Along the positive imaginary axis and the negative imaginary axis, okay? All right, so basically for such a system when the gain increases, so first the system will Okay, this is very interesting. So we have more interpretation. Will change from overdamped, still overdamped, overdamped, at one special point right here, that become critical damped system. Okay, that means damping ratio now equal to one. Before damping ratio equal to, before damping ratio equal to greater than one, all right? And uh, after this, damping ratio become less than one. With further increase of gain k, that means the system will oscillate more and more because damping ratio becomes smaller and smaller. But the time constant remains the same. Why? Because the real part of the root is fixed. However, well, with increase of gain k, the oscillation frequency will increase because the imaginary part gets bigger and bigger. That means damped natural frequency gets bigger and bigger, all right? So that's the interpretation of the result. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. Hey, can you find a point, the closed loop pole that associate with say, damping ratio equal to 0 0.707, which is a square root of two over two, which means if you recall, means the beta value should be equal to 45 degrees. So I draw a beta value equal to 45 degrees, cosine 45 equal to square root of two over two equal to 7.07. .07. And you find the point of intersection with the root loci of the 45 degree array. This point corresponding to the closed loop pole whose damping ratio equal to 0.707. .07. Well, just uh, to make it more general, I just put a beta value here. And obviously you can change the value of a beta, right? Okay. And if a beta equal to 60 degree, your damping ratio will be further reduced to 0.5. Okay. And because cosine 60 equal to 0.5. So this is also another way to interpret the result. So, and in summary of both graph, so I have a question say, hey, with the increase of gain K, will the system become unstable? No, they will never become unstable because no matter how you increase the gain, well, it always stay on the left-hand side of the S plane. So the system is stable. It will never cross to the right-hand side of the S plane, okay? So this offers you some interpretation of this uh, two very simple root locus plot, all right? And obviously here, actually it's, uh, I, I explained to you how to get that. And we can also get this a little bit later, but uh, just now take it for granted. That's how it look like, okay? And the right at this moment, what you need to emphasize is how to interpret the, the result, which I just uh, which I just did. So if you look at the two very simple systems, now let's look at a little bit sophisticated system. So 
how we get this no need to worry this is just the actually the root locus plot of a system follow very very strict rules and for this kind of a pole configuration the root locus always look like this for example if we have three open loop pole on the real axis actually this is the simulation we're going to do for the next two videos, I'm going to show you detailed way how we come out of this uh, root loci, why root loci is uh, so important. We're going to look at this. But for now, just uh, um, take it for granted. These are the um, open loop pole configuration and the corresponding root loci. At this moment, i just going to show you how to interpret the result. Okay. Earlier, we have one pole. We have two pole, right? So with the one pole, the system is always stable and it's always overdamped. With two pole, system actually started to become critical damped and underdamped. Now with the three pole, you can see one, two, three. Eventually, the system will become unstable because whenever the root loci come to here, that means what? Well, you have the system which on the right hand side, you have the exponential term, a positive value times t. That means the system is going to blow up, all right? The magnitude is going to get larger and larger, so this system is unstable, okay? When the k gets large enough, okay? So this is an interpretation, but when the k value are very small, the system can be actually overdamped, which I'm going to show you in in the next two lecture detailed numeric simulation. All right, so this is three poles. They are all real, and here is the three poles. One real, the other two imaginary. All right, a pair of complex conjugates. Similar results. Once the k gets large enough, it will cross the imaginary axis. System become unstable. Okay. Compare the these two systems, what's the major difference? Okay, let's say if we try to get a damping ratio equal to 0 0.707 .07 with corresponding to beta equal to cosine beta equal to 45 degree. Point of intersection right here, that's corresponding to damping ratio 707. .07. But for this one, does, does the system have a point related to damping ratio 0 0.707? .07? No because there's no intersection of this cosine beta equal to 45 and the root loci, okay? So that's a, that's, a, that's, a major, that's a major difference, okay? All right, so when the system have a four poles, in this case, okay, a pair of real, a pair of complex conjugates, once again, system will become unstable. So in general, when the increase number of poles, system tend to get actually unstable, all right? And this is a similar case, four poles, but they are all complex conjugates. And as you can see, eventually the system will become unstable. So I have a question for you for this one. And to interpret the, the result, I may ask you, Will the system ever become overdamped? No. The reason is that's a root loci, that's a root loci, that's a root loci. It will never be on the real axis. So it will not it will never be overdamped because overdamped case corresponding to zeta greater than one corresponding to you have poles on the real axis and we don't have any poles on the real axis. So this is how to interpret the result. Now, that's another situation, okay? Two poles on the real axis, two complex conjugates, okay? Once again, with the increase of, again, eventually system become unstable, okay? And uh, similar situation here, system will also become unstable, all right? So far, we have looked at the, the configuration without zero. So next, we're going to look at the configuration with open loop zeros, all right? Okay, so we have a look at the case of one open loop pole. So if we have a zero, so one thing very important, this is kind of a rule is uh, actually 
the root loci will end at the open loop zero. Okay, so one pole, one zero, it ends right there. How about the case we have two pole and one zero, and we have two segments, okay? The detailed rules we will learn a little bit later, okay? But I, here I just show you the result, okay? One branch stop right there, and this branch still goes to negative infinity, infinity along the negative real axis, okay? And once again, the negative real axis can be represented as, uh, well, positive 180 degree or negative 180 degree or positive negative 180 degree times 2k plus 1, all right? Which is a very, which is exactly what we have right here, right? So this is the case, simple case with uh, a zero. Let's look at a more complex case with zero. So this is a pair of complex conjugates, pole and one zero. So basically one branch will be going to here, the other branch will going to negative infinity. So to interpret the result, I may ask you, hey, will this system become ever become unstable? No, because the root of loci will never cross the imaginary axis. So the system is always the system is always stable. All right. So next question I'm going to ask you is the increase of the gain k, the system's damping ratio increase or decrease? Actually, in this case, since the root loci, oh, okay, remember this, the root loci always starts from the pole and ends at zero. So that, that's the, this direction, right? So basically, you can see with increasing of this, the beta angle gets smaller and smaller, so damping ratio gets larger and larger, okay? So that's another case of three poles, one zero, and this is one segment, and this is another segment, so, well, to interpret the result, I have one question where the increasing of the game make the system unstable. No, because the system is still always on the right hand side of S plane. So the system is always, it's always stable, right? And, uh, but with increasing of the gain K, the system will oscillate more and more, right? Okay, because the further away you're going, that means the larger the beta, that means the smaller the damping ratio, okay? And this is a more complex case. And here, no need to worry how we get this. I just wanted to show you this configuration and uh, how to interpret the result. And once again, with increase of gain K, eventually the system will become unstable, right? And this is the case we have uh, four open loop four open loop poles, they are all complex variables, and the one uh, real zero, okay? So this is how the root locus plot look like. Eventually this will also become unstable because eventually this will cross the imaginary axis, okay? And this one, as you can see, it ends at this open loop zero here. So this system is always stable actually, okay? So is this system. So this is a very quick introduction to the open loop uh, zero pole location and the corresponding root loci and how to interpret the results okay okay once again let's go back to the system we we were looking at earlier so basically is this uh op this this controller pd control of this third order system so since this is a third order system okay it, the, the root locus plot could be something look like this. Actually, it indeed is something look like this. And uh, we do have this simulation result we're going to see. So k equal to zero goes to this, right? One branch goes to that, the other branch goes to this, and this corresponding to this plant. And in the next two videos, we will go through the details about how we come out of this root loci by numeric simulations. We're going to do k equal to zero, we're going to do k equal to 10, k equal to uh, 600, k equal to 100, k equal to 600. Obviously you can see here when k equal to 600 is special point. It's on the imaginary axis. This is a, this is a boundary between stability and instability. Once it's bigger than when the k equal to 1000, that's 
on the instability side, we will see it in simulations. All right. And thank you for watching. So in the next two videos, I'm going to show you the detailed numeric simulation of this uh, uh, controller and how how K changes and how the changing K impact the root location and the system's performance. I mean the closed loop performance. Okay, so we're going to see MATLAB simulation for the next two lectures. Thank you very much.